Hello there folks, I do hope you're well. Okay, we've reached episode four now in the series, the ongoing series, the scum that are the bookies versus us, the punters, the downtrodden, the folk that they don't give two tosses about or a toss about, however you want to play it and say it. Yeah, got a couple more stories today. Not as many as it turns out, but we've got a couple of quick ones and then we've got uh, a continuing thread from Gary who uh, gave us a couple of stories yesterday. Now let me just say before we go any further, a couple of people have questioned the validity of Gary's stories and other people's for that matter. There's the odd story I look at myself and I think, no, that's made up, so I don't use it. There's the odd one I'm not 100% sure about, but if I think it's a good story, I'll use it anyway. It's not up to me to find out whether these stories are correct or not, or whether we've got a bit of a, a Walter Mitty or two amongst us. I don't know that. If I repeat a story, it's just what's sent to me. You can see it in the comment threads, folks. So I am getting these stories. I'm not making them up myself. But I've got to believe people are genuine and sending me genuine stories. I, for one, think Gary is, to be honest with you. A couple have commented as to why Gary didn't pull uh, his fellow staff member up a few years since, the, the guy that was robbing off punters. And I'm suggesting, and I might be wrong, the reason he didn't was it's a damn for the first time. Nobody really likes confrontation, but for all it had happened as well, there's this thing in this country, isn't there, where we don't like to dob one another in. We don't like to snitch. It's a, it's a big thing, isn't it? So I'm guessing they let the first thing go, but after they did it again to a second customer, who as it turned out, I think they mentioned was an older man as well, an old man, they thought, no, 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 no. No, they didn't say that. I'm making that up. Uh, but they thought, no, 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 no. We can't have this. We can't have this at all. He's got to be brought to task, and that's what they did, and got him sacked. Anyway, Gary's given us another couple of stories. Gary was an ex Labrooks employee, and I think the stories are fascinating, so I'm going to read them to you. But before that, I've got another couple of quick ones. And all I'll say again, folks, if you don't mind, what we're going to do with this series now is going to be a seven o'clocker every night. If I've got stories to tell, it'll be seven nights a week. Um, if ever there's no stories there, or if they dry up, there'll be none. But as people come to the, to the site, to the channel, and have anything to tell me, uh, and if they're happy to have it aired, I'll gladly do that, you know. Um, it's your stories, folks. It's your channel. If you've got anything to say, tell me. If I think it's worthy of airing, I'll bring it to here. Um, and I'm happy to do that. I don't always read the stories great, but it's not always easy to read them. But I'll do the best I can with them. I really will. Uh, and where, where, where needed or, or where wanted, I'll give an opinion, my opinion on things as well. But it won't always be what everyone will agree with. But it's all about us having an opinion, isn't it? That's what we're here for. That's what the channel's here for. But before I get to um, Gary's story, I had a couple in over the last day or so. There's not been as many today. But I had one off, well, we had one off Ray and one off Paul. Ray was saying to me there was an arse there, he fancied, at 66 to 1. I think he said it was called Roy McGee. Roy McGee, 66 to 1. He tried to get a fiver on with Betfair. They allowed him £1.50. They were the things that William Hill were doing with me 18 months ago. I should have stopped betting with them then and didn't do. I only did the odd bet with them this year because Cheltenham came up and they had a couple of specials on that nobody else did. That's the only reason I went with William Hill. Um, I won't be going there again. My money's now out, the account is closed. I'm not having it again. They're absolutely crap. I, they used to be my favourite high street bookie 25, 35, 40 years ago. They were a proper bookmaker then. They're not anymore. They're a joke. They're all jokes, but... They had the pack there, I would imagine. So anyway, they'd let him have a pound fifty. And I'm thinking, how often does sixty-six to one us come in? They just don't, do they? They don't. I think I've had a fifty to one or once. I think I have. I've had sixty-six to one as a hundred to one as placed, but I don't think I've had winners. I think the best horse I've had is fifty to one and a few thirty-three to ones. You just don't tend to get sixty-six to one as. But that said, a company the size of Betfair. That was the sports book, by the way. But a company the size of Betfair, they can't risk losing three hundred quid on a sixty-six to one. You know, it's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. So they're limiting the guy to 100 quid win, should it win. And I just think, well, it's not only 100 quid, it's 90 quid, isn't it? But I'm just thinking, it's madness, isn't it, really? I mean, gone were the days where they used to take a bet. Bookmakers used to take a bet. It was us against them, and, you know, the best men won, but not anymore. Paul came on to me. Paul uh, gave me a longish story. I won't read it all to you because it means going on there and getting up close. He says it's uh, the videos on YouTube. He mentions a guy, he said, put a two grand accumulator on. Um, I don't think he mentioned which bookmakers. Anyway, it came and he came back into the bookies later to collect his seven grand. The two grand got turned into seven. They said they couldn't pay him. They said, but we've not got enough money here. But if you go to another shop around the corner, they may have it. He said, no, 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 no. Put the bet on here. I want the money here. 
he was worried that if he went to another shop, they realised he was there for his money, they might find a way to fob him off. Then he said, well, OK, then what we can do, we can give you on a card. He said, no, 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 don't want it on a card. I gave you cash, I want it in cash. Well, we've not got it. He said, well, I want it in cash, I'll get it from head office, get it from wherever, and I'll wait for my money. They didn't like his tones, so they called the police, the police came in. He told them the story and he said the story, the bookmakers did the same. The police said, it's between you and the bookmaker. Yes, you put the bet on, yes, the bet won. As far as we can see, although it's nothing down to us, you owe the guy the money. It's up to yourself to sort it out and the police left. With that, the bookmaker said, well, I'll tell you what we'll do then. We'll give you it all on the card. Said, no, no, I've told you that, no. Well, 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 we've not got the money. We can give you two grand now. You'll have to come back for the rest. He didn't want to do that, but he did that. He took two grand with the understanding he'd come back for, for the rest. And I believe he made a few journeys back until he got his money. But in the end, he got his money. But it took time after time after time. So you've got, you've got probably, I'm guessing, a big high street to book it with billions of pounds. They can't settle a bet where they've only lost five grand themselves. They can't settle it. It's crazy, isn't it? And it takes four or five visits to get that money. Crazy. Right, back to Gary now. He gave us an extra couple of stories yesterday that I've not read to you. I said I'll read them later yesterday, and I did. And I'd like to bring them to you. Now, I think they're crackers, these. I mean, as I say, again, somebody might find fault in them. I like them. He said, right, now, a couple of things about Labrooks. Oh, by the way, did I say it? I think I did. Seven o'clock every night. Yeah, I did say it, but seven o'clock every night... This video will be on here. If there's a video to do about how corrupt the bookies are, you'll find it at seven o'clock every night. And again, what I'll say to you folk is, if you can, thumbs up, all the likes and all that, it gets pushed to more people and share it if you can. The first one went to 40 or thousand views. The rest since of anything from a thousand and a half to five thousand. It's not that people get fed up with them, I don't believe, because we've got a whole new lot of subscribers jumps on board. I think it's because YouTube aren't pushing it to as many people. They're not pushing it to as many people because when it first comes out, it's not being seen by enough people in one go and getting the thumbs up. That's the idea of making them at 7 o'clock now. If I let you know it's 7 o'clock every night, those of you that can jump on at 7 o'clock or that first quarter of an hour would be great. Give it a thumbs up and hopefully YouTube will see it. It's got some traction very, very quickly. They'll throw it to more. More will see it. We'll get more followers. We'll get more stories. Uh, and then ultimately from that further down the line, I don't know. As a collective, we might find a way to do some damage to the bookies. How, I don't know, but that's further down the line. Right, said, was it, was Gary, so Gary. Right, now a couple of things about Labrook's policies that I think shows what kind of a company they are, says Gary. In the heady days of the roulette machines where gamblers were spinning 100 pound bets every 30 seconds, these machines were ruining lives. We saw it day in, day out, people losing their wages, mortgages, the families. It's understandable, understandably, potentially very stressful for them in that situation. Several times I've seen problem gamblers damage these machines that cause their misery. He said, I've seen stools put through them. I've seen fists put through them. He said, one time a hammer was taken to them. He said, it's not very pleasant to see. In fact, it can be quite scary for the people in the shop, for the customers and for the staff. But he has seen somebody take a hammer to the machines. He said, he said however sympathetic, uh, this is still criminal damage. He said, disorderly behaviour and clear signs of a crisis from the gambler. He said often we'd, we'd call security, uh, we'd press panic buttons. He said and when the panic buttons were pressed, he said you'd get a response, but the response was always the same. Don't call the police. Head office would say don't call the police. Don't ban the customer. Don't call the police, don't ban the customer. Regardless of what damage they've done, don't do either of those things. They'd say an engineer will be with you within the hour to fix the machine. And lo and behold, an engineer came and it was fixed and everything went on as normal. They didn't want any bad press, but at the same time, they didn't want to lose customers for all the amount of damage the machines. Them same customers are damaging machines because of how much they've lost and how regularly they're losing. They want them customers back because they want them to lose more and more and more. It's all about making more and more and more profit. Um, so... Uh, so that, that's what they wanted to do. They're happy to ruin people's lives. He said, really, it's just shocking. It really is shocking. Um, he said, another anti-punter policy. Um, he said, as I've mentioned, he said, winning bets had to be checked. He said, the, and on our shop system, they were called R stamps, R for regular, R for round. He said, and any returns over £10 were R stamped. He said, 
Working in a village shop with many regular customers, you got to know the regular betters, the regular bets. He said sometimes bets that we could see, uh, we'd see coming, and, and you'd, you'd know, say, e.g., it was Dave's, he said, because you knew Dave's handwriting. Uh, and it would stay in the system, he said, uh, for a while. And you'd figure out this was a bet that Dave hadn't collected. Uh, so obviously he doesn't know about it. Maybe he's lost his slip. Uh, maybe there was an amended result and he didn't realise he'd won. But clearly it was Dave's bet. Uh, it was a winner and it was definitely Dave's bet. He said, now they were under strict orders, strict instruction, that they were not allowed to tell any customers about bets that remained in the system. Even if they're absolutely sure whose bet it was, they're not allowed to tell customers. Um, and what they have to do is they have to fill in a lost receipt form. That's all they do, he said. And then what happens after that? One year down the line, any unclaimed bets will be just kept by the company. Uh, so if you've not come in within a year, the bet goes back to the company. He said in his eyes, that's just them knowingly stealing off the patrons. Now again, some people will say, well, he should have told that Dave. Me, myself, and it's easy to say this when it's not my job on the line and whatever else, I honestly and genuinely believe I would have done. Maybe Gaddy did from time to time, maybe. Maybe with certain people he, he did that because maybe he knew with certain people they wouldn't tell others. But maybe there was people he wouldn't do that to because he was worried that it would get back to the company and he would lose his job. But the all around policy from the company is absolutely shocking. Right, he said another policy that irked the staff was when they brought in forced evening long person working where they made you work and they told you you'd be working on your own. He said, betting shops are open until 10 p.m. He said, and sometimes they're in quiet residential areas. They sometimes attract unsavory clientele. He said, but the long and short of it is, betting shops aren't the safest places to work anyway. When you're manning them on your own, they're even worse. He said, the vast majority of staff were against the, the night loan working. Uh, he said he had a colleague called Joan, who was in her 60s, we mentioned her yesterday. And she was very, very uncomfortable working alone at night time. Uh, and they just said to her, well, if that's how you feel, go and get another job then. What uh, customer relations that is, or staff relations that is. It's shocking, isn't it? It still bothers him that, unfortunately, Joan was the target of an armed robbery one night around an hour after his shift had finished, when she was left alone working the night shift. He said, after quite a while, um, and, and instances of this throughout the country, Labrooks did decide that the working alone policy wasn't workable and they changed it so you didn't have to work on your own. But that was after many, many serious instances. He said there was a serious one, uh, an attack in London, where a lone lady was working. She got seriously sexually assaulted and physically assaulted in her own shop. Shameful. And then I think this is the last one. He said, on a lighter note, a few stories of, let's say, oh, I like this bit. On a lighter note, a few stories of, let's say, Yorkshire's dumbest criminals he said some robberies i've been privy pri some robberies i've been privy to myself he said one a regular customer had been in the betting shop all day losing more and more until he lost all his money sometime later a man came back in a balaclava and demanded that the cashier put all the money in his bag she duly put it all in the bag and then calmly said as she passed the bag over to him there you go bill Yes, it was his regular who'd lost all that money called Bill, stealing all his money back. I heard that he never even made it home before being caught. He said next there was a shop in Harworth near Doncaster. One of the most brilliant and utterly stupid heists in memory. He said one morning staff attended the shop to find a hole in the wall and a disturbed looking shop. He said upon playing back the CCTV, uh, the story became apparent. He said there was a little side corridor in the shop and it was the only area in the whole shop that wasn't covered by CCTV. It was a blind spot. The criminals had worked this out. In the middle of the night, they pop-knocked through the side wall with a sledgehammer, right where the corridor was without being seen. Next, we see on the cameras a lasso hook around the FOBT machine and they dragged the fob machine into the corridor, into the blind spot. They crowbar open the machine and after all this planning, it's only at that point, they realise that the machines are emptied every single night. There's nothing in them at all. So they leave empty-handed. But brilliant of them to find out a way of doing it in a place that there's no cameras in. The, the robbery was absolutely perfect other than the fact there was no money there. So obviously no blind spot thereafter. And lastly, he said, there was an armed robbery at the Gainsborough shop 
He said two thugs had got him with a sawn off shotgun. They demanded the cash, which his colleagues obliged with, and give over all the takings. He said the bright sparks then hot footed it out of the shop and to the cab firm next door to the bookies. They used one of these taxis as a makeshift getaway car. They asked the driver to drop them off at their actual home address. The police didn't take long to catch these people. Anyway, he says, I hope you find some of it interesting. He said, thinking back, it's just reminding me how uh, I wasted 10 years of my life. Luckily now, I'm with a proper company doing a decent job. Now, as I say, some might say they ain't true. I don't know. I believe them, but I want to believe them. I think they're true. There was another story today, folks, that came in that I can't find on the comment section. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. It was saying that a guy was in one of the shops and he won about, I can't remember, so I'm making the monies up. He won about five grand. I don't think it was five grand. Well, let's say it was five grand. It wasn't a massive amount. Went into the shop to collect his money. No, 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 we can't give it here. We've not got the money. Uh, and then they tried doing with a void racer, with this, with that, the other. I want my money, I want it now. I've won. No, no, we can't give it here. He said, I'm telling you now, if you don't give it me, there'll be trouble. So the ring head office and they said, don't pay him. He's made threats, don't pay him. He said, well, I'm telling you now, to head office, if you don't pay me, there'll be trouble. They don't pay him. He buggers off out. This guy in the shop says, he comes back in 15, 20 minutes later with a hammer and he smashes the fob machines up. He smashes everything up. The perspex screen, the fob machines, the whole shooting match. He said, as it turns out, it was really, really scary for everyone in there, the staff and some of us. He said, but we all thought it was brilliant the way he did it and the fact that he wanted to make sure that if he wasn't paying him, he was getting his money one way or the other. I'm not so sure he got paid. Uh, it, did, it did say, and I can't remember, but I thought that was great. And, you know, that's what some of these shops and these bookmakers are driving folk to. And it's a shame it has to come to that, but why on earth can't they revert to the old days? Where, as I say, you fancied an horse or horses or whatever it may be, you're offered to put a bet on. If they didn't want to take it, they didn't take it. But as long as they took it, it was like your gentleman's agreement, as somebody said a few days ago. If you win, you get your money, they pay you out. And if you lose, they keep your money. We're trusting them. We're giving them our hard earned. Saying if we lose, you keep that. You keep that bill. You keep that old laddie. You keep that, Mr. Betfair. You, Paddy, you keep that. If I lose, that's yours. But if I win, I want it back with interest. If they're taking that, that's what they should be giving you. Anyway, that's it for now. So this will be out at 7 o'clock tonight. On a nightly basis, there'll be one in this series out at 7 as long as stories are coming in. If there's no stories there, obviously, I can't report anything. But if there are, we'll share them and we'll share them with regularity. If anybody's got any special stories that they don't want in the comment section, they want to email it to me. The email address is there if you look on the channel. It's bgog999 at hotmail.co.uk. Or is it .com? It's .co.uk, I'm sure it is. But it's there for you. If, you, if, if I'm wrong, just look in the home section and you'll find the email address. And as I say, if anybody wants to come in here and tell us the stories, you know, you must won't be on here, so you, you've got anonymity. We'll only use your first name. We'll even use a made-up name if you want. You can tell us the stories and, uh, you know, and I'll relay the, them to the public here. All right? Anyway, thanks for that. A bit longer than I meant to again, but I'll let you go now. Do apologise. <laughs>